Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good it to Madam Adura. Today, we will present our seminar to entitled Environmental Cost and Benefit. So, let us begin. Meet our team members. Hi, I am Nur Kamalia and I am the first presenter for my group. So, let us start with the introduction. Environment refers to the surrounding of the living organism, which includes all the natural forces and also other living things, and it can affect our ability to live on the earth. So, environmental sustainability refers to the ability to improve the quality of human life while supporting the well-being of the ecosystem. So, business activities can affect the environment in many ways. First, when office buildings use a lot of electricity, especially the aircon, it will emit poisonous gases into the surrounding and also causes the air to be hotter and polluted. So, the heat radiation threat can cause global warming effect. Second, the widened use of papers can cause more trees to be cut down. Many of the trees for paper industries are sourced from illegal tree loggers who destroy forests with high conservation values. And lastly, the wide use of personal transportation has led to air pollution. The smog, carbon monoxide and toxins emitted by the vehicles are troubling because they allow humans to breathe in the polluted air. And this has made the health concern issue more serious from years to years. Moving on to the environmental cost, it is defined as cost incurred by the organization to minimize the environmental impact through preventing, monitoring and also reporting. It also includes the cost incurred to comply with the regulatory standards as well as costs associated with the failure of addressing these issues. Environmental cost management enables the business owner to control the cost associated with the environmental impact arising from the business operations. Violations to environmental law are considered as white-collar crimes, with violators facing possibility of fines, jail, probation or a combination. However, generally in most cases, corporations will only incur fines for violations. Environmental costs can be split into two categories. The first one is the internal cost and also external cost. External cost refers to the cost imposed upon a third party when the goods or services are produced and consumed. So the goods and services with external costs are effectively being subsidized by the society at large, which will be an upbeat for the cost. Meanwhile, the internal costs can be easy to understand and also explain. So they are the costs that a business bases its base price on and could directly reflect it on the company's income statement. So they include costs like the materials, labor, uh, overhead and also the equipment. So let us look into the example of internal cost and also external cost. The first example of internal cost is the improved system and check-in order. So in order for company to avoid paying penalties, they need to incur costs for improve their system and also check in order. Second one, uh, for every product that they produce, the company must incur costs to dispose the waste of the product. The third one is the product take back cost in which the companies must provide facilities for the customers to return the item such as the batteries, printer cartridge or recycling. So, the seller of such items must bear the cost of these take backs. The, and the last one is the upfront cost. In order for company to gain permission such as permits or license, they need to pay and bear the cost. The example of the external cost, the first one, is the disposing cost at the useful life. When the product has exceeded the expected uh, lifespan, the user must dispose the cost. And in order to do that, the user needs to incur the disposing cost. Second one is the healthcare cost. Most of the product can give side effects as they may contain harmful materials or ingredients. So, uh, users may need to get treatment and incur the cost for the treatment. The third one is the environmental degradation. It is caused by the emission of the, uh, of the emissions or pollutants and waste from the production. 
Lastly, we can move to the tires of the environment cost. At the first stage, it is known as the conventional cost. It refers as a direct cost related to the material and energy cost having environmental relevance. Next is hidden cost. It is an expense that are not normally included in the face value cost. Example of the cost include the ongoing cost of cleaning up contaminated land. The third cost is the contingent cost. It is a liability incurred due to failure to comply with the environmental law and failure to clean up the contaminated sites caused by the business activities and operations. The fourth cost is the relationship and image cost. Some environmental costs are called as less tangible or intangible because they are incurred to affect the subjective perception of management, customer, employee, com and communities. They are being intangible because of the direct benefits that resulted from the relationship or image expenses. And at the last stage is the societal cost. It is a cost to society as a whole from an event, action or policy change. It includes the negative externalities and does not count costs that are transferred to others in contrast to private costs. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I am Nur Shahana. So I'll proceed with the next point, which is cost-benefit analysis. So cost-benefit analysis is a process used by the management to evaluate revenues and costs. This process helps them in determining which project or alternative should they pursue. Hence, it will eventually lead to opportunity costs when management must have to focus on other benefits upon choosing an alternative. It involves measurable financial metrics such as revenue earned, a cost saved, and would also include intangible assets such as employee moral and customer satisfaction. All techniques and models have their weaknesses, so as for CBA, it is not suitable for large projects. Larger projects have longer time to complete, as CBA might fail to focus future concerns such as inflation, interest rates, and also present value of money. Second, there are significant amount of forecasts built into this model, so if one of the forecasts is off, then it will eventually affect the entire project. CBA is a foundation for a decision. It helps an organization, especially in times, to develop benchmark for company projects. Second, deciding whether to pursue a proposed project. Third, assessing change initiative. Fourth, measuring social benefits. And fifth, weighing investment opportunities. And lastly, evaluating resources. So, what are the steps for CBE? First, establish a framework to outline the parameters of analysis so that the management would have the overview of the analysis. Second, identify costs and benefits and categorize it by the type and intent. Third, calculate costs and benefits across the uh, measure, uh, measured life of a project. In this process, it should include all the possible revenue and costs such as for the revenue, it has to improve employee safety and also increase in revenue and sales while for the cost, it has the direct cost and also intangible cost. The fourth step is compare costs and benefits using aggregate information. And the last but not least is analyze results and make an informed and final recommendation. So, moving on to the next point. Would company benefit through costs it spent in taking care of environment? We are of the opinion that yes, it would benefit from incurring costs in taking care of the environment. So, why do we agree? This is because it will help in promoting marketing identity as customers will use, will view us as a corporation that is responsible to environment, hence they will support us. For example, Nike used recyclable polyester for the production of the shoes. Next is organization could choose measurable outcomes that fit into their policies, such as use recyclable packaging or use wind and solar power. Third, it gives impact to both societies and the organization as it encourages them to be responsible to the environment. Next, organization will receive tax benefits from government such as Green Allowance Tax Allowance Asset, Green Allowance Tax Allowance Project and Green Allowance Tax Allowance Services. Last but not least is it can increase organization savings from the use of organic materials where a company can save costs by using recycling, energy conservation and also energy efficient equipment. Green investment tax allowance assets are for the companies that acquire qualifying green technology assets. They are eligible for 100% of qualifying capital expenditure incurred on approved green technology assets and from the date of purchase until 31st December 2020. The allowance can be offset against 70% of statutory income in the year of assessment. Unutilized allowances can be carried forward until they are fully absorbed. 
Green Investment Tax Allowance GITA project are for companies that undertake a qualifying green technology. They are eligible for 100% of qualifying capital expenditure incurred on green technology project from the date of application received by MIDA until the year of assessment 2020. The allowance can be offset against 70% of statutory income in the year of assessment. Unutilized allowance can be carried forward until they are fully absorbed. Green income tax exemption services are for companies which provide green technology services which have been verified by Green Tech Malaysia and they are eligible for 100% of statutory income from the date of application received by MIDA until the year of assessment 2020. The maximum period is 5 years from the date of commencement. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Noharyani binti Muhammad Yusof. So let's proceed with the example of the cost benefit analysis. YY Development has been thinking to invest into the half developments. So they have two options whether to build the big houses or medium houses. They will do the cost benefit analysis in order to determine the best options. For option one, they will build a 100 big houses uh, where 50 units will be rented at 4,000 monthly for 10 years. After 10 years, it will be sold at 200,000 per unit. And another 50 units will be sold immediately after the completion at 300,000. So the cost for option one consists of the construction cost, financing cost, cost of sale and the salary uh, paid to the staff uh, and the total cost is 20.6 million and the benefits uh, for option 1 consists of the sale of the house, the income from the rental and also sale of the house after 10 years and the total is 49 million. To calculate all the cost and the benefit, we will calculate the ratio by divided the benefit with the cost. So the, the ratio for option 1 is 2.38. The positive figure show that it is a good option, but we have to compare it with the option 2. Okay, for the second option, there will be 150 medium houses where 50 units will be rented at 1,000 monthly for 5 years. After 5 years, they will sell the house at 100,000. Another 100 units will be sold immediately after the completion at 200,000. The cost for the option 2 is 12.8 million. Meanwhile, the benefit is 28 million. So we calculate the ratio for option 2 and get 2.19. Both options show a positive figures, but it is better for the YY development to choose option 1 as the ratio is higher as compared to the option 2. Next, let's move to the real practice cost benefit analysis in nautical tourism in Terengganu. So what is nautical tourism? It is a form that relates to the water sport activities. It is a tourism attraction that include activity like the ocean and river crossing, surfing and also fishing. Monsoon Cup is one of the flagship nautical spot in Malaysia located in Terengganu but in 2015 it has been relocated to Johor. So Terengganu has lost its business opportunity and several tourism. That's why Terengganu try to do the cost benefit analysis in order to find potential nautical spots in order to re replace the monsoon cup. They have identified six potential um uh, six potential nautic nautical spots. In Terengganu, the tourism sector will soon replace the oil and gas industry as the biggest contributor to Terengganu economy. So by doing this uh, analysis, they will use the net present value which is NPV at a discount rate of 3%, 7% and 10%. After compare all the NP NPV, they will choose the 3 uh, nautical spot that has the highest NPV as the higher the NPV, the greater will be the benefit. So the cost incurred uh, is like the fixed cost, indirect cost, the variable cost and also direct cost and the benefit is based on the event, lesson, membership, rental and the ticket fee. All the value of the cost and the benefit is obtained from the price of the market trend and also from the expert opinions. After calculate all the cost and the benefit, they will get the net benefits which is the difference between the cost and also the benefits. Later, they will calculate the NPV. As a result, they will choose three um, nautical spots with the highest NPV which is the flight boarding, parasailing and the selling. So this is the cost benefit analysis of parasailing. We can see that the NPV is the highest where it is around 2.5 million. This is the cost benefit analysis of the uh, flyboarding where we can see the NPV is around 1.9 million.
and this the last one this is the cost benefit analysis of the selling where we can see that the NPV at the 3% is around 1.1 million as a conclusion, uh, when we want to make a decision for our business, we also need to consider our environment and how it will be affected by our decision. So in the cost-benefit analysis, it will give the management clear view on how to make a decision while protect our environment by analyzing the cost and the benefits uh, that will be earned from the project. That's all from us. Thank you.